Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Bex Thomas from GE Global Research, and uh, presenting along with me are Andy Day, Director of Optimization Technologies, and Keith O'Reilly, Executive Program Manager from GE Healthcare. Along with us is Srinivas Bolapragada, Principal Scientist at GE Global Research, who is a key contributor along with other team members also in the audience. We would like to thank the Wagner Judging Committee for this opportunity to present our work for bed assignments in a complex and a dynamic hospital environment. Our talk is broadly divided into three sections. The client problem complexity, we'll explain to that initially, the science behind our solution, the application of our solution along with the commercialization plans. Now, I'd like to invite Keith O'Reilly to highlight the GE Healthcare partnership with Mount Sinai and articulate the business problem complexity. Thank you, Bex. Many of you know GE from the appliances you might have in your house, the energy products you might have bought from our capital business or our transportation business. But GE Healthcare is a large part of the overall business, represents 12% of our overall revenue. We also partnered with the Global Research Center to solve our most pressing client problems in healthcare. Global Research Center has been a cornerstone of GE Healthcare and all of our businesses for the past 100 years. We employ 2,800 people, and it's headquartered in Schenectady, New York. The fundamental change that we're trying to work on is the goal is for better health care. It's for everyone, and we're looking to lower the cost of health care. How we're going to do that, we're going to focus on optimization patient flow. We're going to work on enabling hospitals to use better capacity more efficiently. GE Healthcare is committed to invest $6 billion over the next three years to address health care costs, quality, and access. Performance Solutions is part of the GE Healthcare family. We've also partnered with Mount Sinai Medical Center. In 2008, Wayne Keithley, the president and COO of Mount Sinai, uh, came to GE and worked with us in trying to solve their capacity and patient throughput issues. One of the tasks was to manage beds by exception. If I had a bed and a patient looking for a bed with the attributes that matched up, why couldn't I automatically place that patient in the bed without making dozens of phone calls, working on different things to help get a patient to bed faster. So as Bex mentioned, this is a complex and dynamic environment, title of the, of the program. Mount Sinai employs 10,000 people, has 1,172 licensed beds, 14 different buildings, 5 million square feet. Last year had 105,000 ED visits, on a daily basis, they do 150 surgical cases. Their bed transfer rate was three times the national average at the time we started to speak to them. Their average daily census is 92%. They're an academic teaching institution. When we started working with them, they were ranked 18 in U.S. News and World Report. The new report now has them ranked at 14 out of 5,000 hospitals. So the problem that motivated us, we're going to focus a little bit on the ED. It's one of the things that's not controllable. We can control the elective surgical schedule, but we can't control the ED. The average length of stay is around 13 hours. When we break that down, 4.9 hours is to basically make a decision, disposition of the patient, decision to admit. The rest of the time, two-thirds, is waiting is waiting for a bed to be assigned and then for waiting for a patient to be transferred to that floor. There's a lot of things that go on when you have to uh, place a patient in a bed in a hospital. A lot of it's reactive. A lot of it is a high transfer rate because the right patient didn't go into the bed at the right time. A lot of times it's heroic efforts by a couple who know everything about the hospital, but if they left, they would be in some serious trouble. Also, it's a lot of gut check. Does this really work? And the process is not repeatable or sustainable. So when we look at it, we've got to track beds, identify different challenges, uh, numerous things that go along to try and properly pace, uh, place the patient in the right bed. 
What makes this different, and you're going to see a live demo of this before, is Sinai came to us and said, we don't want a mathematical equation to just tell us that we have a problem. Give us something that's going to help us make better decisions. So this isn't just a model. It's not just pre-scheduling. It's not just saying there's a problem or eventually have a problem somewhere. This is very prescriptive in saying this is what you should be doing, when you should be doing it, and how to do it. So if we look at this and we say, what's the impact to an institution? If we can move the bar 3% on inpatient bed capacity utilization, that's worth around $5 million to Mount Sinai. So that being said, let me bring the most important person up, Bex, to talk about the science behind it and look at how this actually works. Thank you, Keith. Bed managers have to address the question of which patient should be placed in which bed. To answer this question in an automated and intelligent way, various data inputs are needed. These inputs range from the hospital's physical structure that captures the hospital layout, the, the, hosp the hospital's resource capacities, which means which units have how many beds, to the real-time status of the beds, as to this bed is available, this has a patient, this bed doesn't have a patient, where the patient is located in the system, and the actual status of the workflows. Bed manager, staff, and patient preferences are also inputs along with the various hospital policies and procedures. The output of the systems are, of the system are bed assignment plans, which includes giving a feasible list of beds for a particular patient. You can put the patient in these beds. But not only that, we provide a suggestion, a specific suggestion for the patient to be placed in a particular bed. Alternatives, if you don't want that, and exceptions that we could not do anything at all. It also provides alerts to the user if the waiting times have exceeded a certain threshold predetermined by the units. The system also provides report to the hospital administrators about the current and the forecasted bottlenecks in the system, and, and, and as well as the operational performance of the hospital captured using predefined metrics. The constraints in the system are the hospital goals itself, the patient care goals itself, and, and the algorithm goals. And, and you'll see what these are in a few minutes. The objectives are to maximize the weighted sum of patient flow benefits minus the penalties for violating the various goals in the system. So our objective is to make sure that the patient flow remains smooth in the whole hospital. The bed assignment problem involves managing multiple different criteria. And, and, and the different solutions may, may produce trade-offs among different criteria. For example, we would wait longer to place a patient in, in a given target unit if there is no bed availability there. Or, or our choice is to assign that patient now that meets the patient care criteria but is not preferred for some non-clinical reason. The complexities of managing these multiple criteria is handled by a preference-based approach where these criteria are combined into a single objective function using relative rankings based on user preferences. These preferences can be changed in the system by a bed manager at any time before an optimization run. Bed managers are provided with a number of feasible beds, but a single placement suggestion is made for a request based on the preferences that they have given us. So each hospital has several rules and requirements. And, and the way we have modeled is as hard constraints or soft constraints, hard requirements or soft requirements. Each of these are captured as goal constraints in the system. These constraints capture the requirement to meet the clinical attributes of the request, as well as the non-clinical special considerations of the request. For example, a physician may specify isolation, telemetry, and negative pressure requirements for the clinical condition of the patient. The patient may also need to be placed in line of sight of the nursing station and prefer being placed closer to a window. So these are non-clinical considerations. In addition to the hospital rules and the patient care requirements, we also manage the stability of the solutions from one run to the other. 
For example, we can we cannot give a completely different assignment plan from one run to the other. Those those assignment plans have to be stable over time. Unless the conditions in the hospitals change drastically, they have to be stable. And we manage that through penalties. Our system provides maximum flexibility to the users to manage the constraints in the system based on the hospital goals, procedures, and policies. Based on user preferences, the constraints in the system can be specified as hard constraint or soft constraint. These constraints can be managed at a hospital level, which is which we call at the system level, or, or even more granular at the request level. Bed managers typically use hard constraints to avoid any deviation from the bed practices. So they would say, these are hard constraints, you just cannot change it. But, you know, hard constraint becomes a hindrance when, when unanticipated deviations in the system occur. So, for example, when, when a hospital occupancy is nearing capacity, bed managers are more amenable to accepting solutions that might violate a certain set of hard constraints. Example, let's say a, a physician preferred target unit. If you're not able to place a patient, which we call an ex assignment exception, then the system automatically relaxes a predefined set of, rela uh, of hard constraints to provide alternative suggestions. If we fail to come up with a suggestion even after the automated relaxations, we provide reasons for why we could not do it, reasons for the exceptions to occur in the system. This includes enumerating the violations in the constraints uh, that we obtain through the constraint satisfaction step, which we'll discuss in the next slide, and that we'll explain shortly, along with detecting a limited set of hard constraints that were violated during runtime. So in our model, how do we model patient flows? Patient flow criteria and placement priorities are managed through a multi-level benefit scheme. A benefit is assigned to a request when a patient, when a, when a request is fulfilled in the system. Additional benefits are provided based on the request type, the patient type, and the wait times. And, and also where the where the request originated from, and if there is a queue in front of the uh, of the unit which is originating the request. So, so we, we account for multiple different factors here. Bed requests can encompass several types based on the origination and the function that needs to be executed. For example, requests may need to be made to transfer patients between inpatient units from post-surgery unit to an inpatient unit or from even from another hospital to an inpatient unit. Similarly, source units can be ICUs, they can be ED, post-surgical units, inpatient units, and many other units. Each criteria or term is weighted based on a user preference obtained through relative ranking measure, relative ranking measure at all levels. So this is this there are multiple levels which each of the terms that you see here. Hospital goals, patient care goals, and solution stability goals are managed through constraints and penalty scheme in the model. If a user specifies a certain constraint to be so a soft constraint, then we associate a slack variable with the constraint to model, and, and we model if the slack variable is active in the system or inactive, and also the extent of deviation from the goal in some cases. Depending on the constraint, a linear or constant penalty function is applied to the slack variable in the objective function. So let's talk about some of the computational challenges uh, and how we address them. To reduce the size of the math program, we use constraint satisfaction techniques. This, pro this step provides as much as 54% reduction in the number of variables. This allows the model to be solved in a computationally efficient manner. And consider... and and, and this allows us to use this system in a real-time system if, if, if we choose to do so. To illustrate how we achieve this, consider the requests on the right indicated by the green, green circles and the available beds on the left indicated by purple. If a bed is feasible for a given request, then the link or edge is created between these two vertices. Only if the beds that are feasible for requests during the constraint satisfaction stage are introduced into the model. Also, we do variable fixing so that only the uh, beds in the feasible list are provided to each request. Constraints are checked sequentially in the system based on the dependencies. For example, 
we sequentially check if the request, uh, if a unit is valid for a request, if a room is valid for a request, and a bed is valid for a request. So if you look at the computational complexity again, the, we, we have somewhere around 60 to, eight, 60 to 100 requests in an hour at any point in time. Uh, Mount Sinai has 1,172 beds. Uh, so that the model may have somewhere between 300 to 1,500 beds. If you look at all the other uh, other beds, which uh, I know we only looked at heart, medical, and surgery, but if you look at all the other service lines, we have more beds. This 24/7 periodic um, execution of our system and a real-time execution is also possible. Model can be dynamically configured, and and uh, using our strategies, we are able to solve all historical instances within within. 10 seconds using commercial and open source solvers. So let, let's let's look at you know how good our solutions are provided. We we basically validated using historical data sets. We we took snapshots of the state of the hospitals for the last uh, six months and back tested our algorithm on 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 all those data sets. And uh, you know we we saw that 19 percent of the requests could save three hours or more. And 21% of the requests could save potentially save one or two hours. This significant amount of savings that we were see, seeing just through back testing and validation. Also, let's look at you know what the quality of our assignments. What we are seeing is a large number of the assignments uh, seem to be better than the manual process. In some cases, we do worse, but then a large number seems to be as good as or better than the better than the assignments itself that were done by the manual process. Now, now uh, the next step is to actually implement this in in the hospital and see what actually happens. So this is back testing. But to uh, to talk about that, I would invite Andy Day, the director of our optimization technologies, to talk about our client experience. Thank you, Bex. So that's the theory of the case and why we believe we had something here to uh, pursue uh, implementing at uh, Mount Sinai. So we started doing so. And through uh, a series of pilots, um, we have implemented the system, uh, measuring rigorously around uh, what happened before and after. And as you can see uh, from the uh, left-hand side of the slide, there are a number of uh, benefits that were uh, realized during the pilot period in terms of uh, wait time reduction. And again, remember, this is, you know, you have a loved one in the ED, they have a decision to admit, and now no one can tell you what's going on, and they're just waiting, right? And so the, this is a huge source of dissatisfying, dissatisfying for both patients and their families. And if it happens enough, they end up going on ED diversion, which results in lost revenue. Interestingly, while we were performing uh, one of our pilots, and we've got several, and I'll share with you more in a second, um, we actually had a surprise visit by the Joint Commission. And those of you that work in the healthcare space are uh, probably familiar with Joint Commission, but they are an auditing body that uh, looks at hospitals and their practices and determines if they are practicing uh, uh, well and efficiently and if they're safe. And they actually showed up at a Mount Sinai uh, wholly owned affiliate hospital in Queens, and we're doing an audit of the Queens Hospital. And they found a, a number of very long stay patients stuck in the ED at Queens. Okay. And they contacted Wayne Keithley, the COO, and said, uh, we actually are going to have to write you up with a formal finding that you have an unsafe condition where patients are, are boarding way too long in your ED. And he said, that's really serious and I'm, I'm concerned about patient flow. In fact, we're doing a lot of work on that. If you wouldn't mind coming over to main campus, we'll, let, let us share with you what, what we're doing here and showed him this project that we were doing in our, in our automated bed pro, uh, process. We completely flipped it. They went back and told Mark Chasmuth, Mount Sinai is doing the most revolutionary thing in bed management they've seen and uh, got the, uh, the, the write-up to go away. So uh, good, good finding even during the prototype phase. Um, but I guess, um, and of course, as Bex mentioned, during back testing, we checked the quality of the fits that we're uh, recommending. Uh, we also do this during the pilot periods where we had people, you know, uh, recommending in parallel to the system and making sure that with all these different parameters and, and needs, we weren't just mathematically solving the, the mathematical problem. We were providing recommendations that their expert bed managers agreed to and continued to show uh, good results. So, um, we're now moving from the prototype phase, right? So we did all of this work with Mount, Mount Sinai uh, in prototype very rapidly. We're now production hardening this into a product that we're actually going to provide to hospitals. Um, it's going to be cloud-based, uh, also available on site. Uh, we use uh, a 
Microsoft Azure and uh, for the cloud hosting and trust Microsoft Trust Services because this is HIPAA compliant data, right? These have patient names and ID numbers and whatnot. Um, and uh, we're in the process again of, of building this out for launch into a commercial product early next year. So we're very excited about this. We think it's going to have a big impact for, for hospitals across the board. Um, and I have um, uh, some, I'd like to show you a demo of the system, uh, if you don't mind, just for a second. And we'll uh, switch back to the presentation momentarily. And so this is the uh, system running right now in Mount Sinai. It's 2 p.m. Uh, East Coast time uh, from the last uh, run. And um, right now you can see that there are 35 open bed requests at Mount Sinai. For those 35 bed requests, we have 24 where there's a perfect match. Every criteria and constraint is met, and we optimize uh, the fit for those patients. We have six where um, there are fits recommended, but they require some consideration because some constraints that were listed as soft constraints uh, are not fully met, right? And so it's, uh, it, it merits a, an expert view. And then there's five patients where, based on everything that's going on in the hospital, we uh, can't quite place them at this point in time right now. And uh, this is where we really want those expert bed managers to focus their time, right? These are five patients that might have multiple organ system failures or comorbidities that cause their primary diagnosis to have complications in, the, in terms of placing the patients. They're, they're hard to place. And so this requires, this is where those all those bed managers should be focused instead of on the bulk of the population. The other thing I'll stress is um, this this system is recommending it's a many-to-many -many optimization. So we have all these different patient requests coming in for beds and all these different possibilities. Currently, uh, or historically, Mount Sinai on all three shifts of the day had seven bed managers doing nothing but worrying about this problem. And they're all doing, they're optimizing for what they're looking at at the expense of their partners, right? And so what the system does is it looks at all of them in an objective function and gives them a recommendation that no one human could possibly do. Okay, so we're really uh, excited about what that what that can do. And if you look, for example, this is one patient, and this is the the HIPAA compliant version, so things are hidden. Um, you know, this is a patient where we've got a specific bed recommended. They're in the ED, and they've actually, we recommended a bed for this patient eight hours ago. And as Bex mentioned earlier, since this patient re recommendation was made eight hours ago, uh, already automatically, not only was the bed manager alerted to the fit eight hours ago, but then th there have been three escalations since then where people have been receiving emails in the hospital saying, this patient's becoming dissatisfied. Do something, do something, do something, right? Um, so that it's an active uh, system that can can progress care. And then um, other use case of this, there on the on the left hand side of the screen that you're seeing, um, every morning at 6 a.m. we're forecasting the operational state of the hospitals from a from a bed capacity perspective, looking forward for the next 24 hours, and we're using a simulation model to do that. Uh, Dave Taldano from our team is giving a pitch tomorrow about that if you're interested in details, but. Um, we're, this is a use case, for example, uh, for the EVS team, the guys who actually turn the beds, clean the beds, and make them available for the next patients. So what we're giving them, instead of just they're having their little routines and then somebody pays them saying, oh, we got a stack clean, run over to this other unit, is we're giving them, based upon the actual forecasted constraints for the day, plus everything that's going on in auto bed, and we're giving them clean beds in this order. And it's not just your linear, basic uh, rounding that you were doing before. It's eliminate the constraints before, you, before they hit. Okay? So, um, and we have many, many other uh, use cases for this that we're really excited about beyond just bed management. So um, with that, I'll switch back to the PowerPoint. And um, I mentioned Mount Sinai. Our next uh, pilot uh, site is St. Luke's in Houston. And we're in the process right now of putting that system together. That, interest, uh, that involves another set of interesting parameters which weren't really prevalent or mainstream at Mount Sinai. Uh, St. Luke's operates more in the 80% uh, range of, of capacity utilization, or even in the high 70s. And so on any given day, they vary their staffing to try and optimize their nursing labor cost. So now we have to have the, uh, the the bed placement algorithm tap into the staffing module and you know forecast not only what staff should they have, but based on the staff that is there, what's the optimum fit, right? So we're now integrating the staffing systems. And scheduling systems is next, right? So you can see where this is going. We, we think this is going to be a, an entire suite of uh, OR-driven um, uh, optimization tools available to help operate hospitals more efficiently, and that's what we're building. So with that, Bex, do you want to close? 
Thank you, Andy. So, you know, hopefully we have showed you that this is this is a complex problem with, with various hospital requirements. The various stakeholders in the hospital and uh, there are temporal dynamics. It's always changing. Uh, hospital state is always changing. We think that the model flexibility, the computational efficiency that we bring through our algorithms and the cloud-based analytics, uh, you know, that we provide as a service to to the hospitals are key contributions here and, and drivers also for success of this project as well as the product that we plan. Uh, pilot implementation at Mount Sinai is deemed a success with other planned test sites and plans for commercialization. So we, you know, based on our healthy imagination goals, we, we, this solution is aiming to improve the quality of healthcare. This affects us and our families in a big way and uh, we're very proud to do this project. Thank you very much.